What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So, uh, we have gone ahead, made our helm yellow to match the armor, and we went ahead and picked up Lucent Beam. So at the end of the last episode, we obviously had the book. Uh, if you had gone on over here and talked to Dunmire, you could turn that in, and by doing so, we now have access to Lucent Beam, which is a rather awesome Radiant spell. On top of that, he's going to move over to here. This is after reading the Umbral book, so if you talk to him more, he's going to talk about going to the tower. Uh, he also has Radiant Slash, but to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this spell. I just I don't think it's good at all. It has a, a very kind of weird hitbox, and it's up hitting the ground a lot because of that, so can't really recommend that. Uh, but otherwise, we have a couple other things we're going to do, and the first is going to be to forcefully advance Stormin's questline. So I went ahead and confirmed this on the other character, uh, but we are going to warp to the heist. The hoist. Why am I saying heist? And this is one of those things I, I actually backed up the save uh, to confirm this worked exactly how I thought it did because I don't want to be messing up quest lines at all. But now we're going to go up and reach Upper Calrath. So I missed that before. Not a problem. And by going to Upper Kalrath, what we're doing here is we're going to forcefully advance the, the quest line. Uh, they should just auto-move, but since they haven't and they weren't down, by doing this we can close out the, the Ginnerberry quest, which is what we want. And even if we die, it doesn't matter. We're just running past these guys. Up oh, and here it is. So, you may remember before we didn't want to take this. Now that we have uh, successfully told Byron about Winterberry, we can go ahead and go here now. And this is going to take us up top. We're going to gain access to Upper Kalrath, which we're not going to do just yet. We're actually going to make our way to the Fief of the Frozen Curse in this episode. And we're going to get started on that zone. After that zone's done, we're going to come back and then we'll do Upper Kalrath. But there's a, uh, a progression of certain stigmas that we need to complete Isaac's quest. And because of that, we're going to go to the Frozen Fief first. I also got to decide what I want for a secondary weapon here, because for a while you could rock double Pietas, but it seems like they've patched it to where um, they're not offering double Pietas anymore, which is disappointing, because I would like one. I anyway, go ahead and get that vestige. And then we want to go ahead and open this door, and that door is going to be what triggers Stoman to move. So, we've officially reached Upper Kalroth. We're not going to do anything here, we're just, just getting this ready. And now, we're going to go back to Skyrest, and we should get the Bell Room Key for free. You'll see, he is now gone, and right here in the corner we have Stoman's note map of Bell Rise and the Pilgrim's Perch Key. Speaking of maps, I actually missed the map for Upper Kalrath before. I was going to grab it later, but we can just get it real fast. It's right here at District. And I, I've said it before, but if I do miss a loot in an episode, rest assured, when I find that loot, I will go back and revisit and grab it. But we can go Umbral through here. Pick up the map. Not that it really matters. I don't think the... As far as I know, the maps don't... Uh, they don't involve any trophies and... No, obviously, you, you don't really need those, and I'm telling you where to go. Uh, but from here, we want to go to Sanctuary. We're going to get the Sacred Resonance set. And we're going to go ahead and put on some Vestige Moths just to warp out when we're done this. So go here and climb up. Um, we're just going to go all the way back. There's a door we can get now that we have the Pilgrim's Perch Key. Uh, but talking more about the setup, yeah, if I can... If, if it goes back to letting us buy double, I would like to get another Pietas. Uh, alternatively, the final boss has a sword that goes along with Pietas, and we can get that, and that would be pretty good. Uh, of course, the other option would be to get a super big Great Shield, and basically a Great Shield alongside uh, the, the Pieta Longsword, and, and play this very much like a, a Paladin-esque type character. But the one downside with that is to use a very heavy great shield. There's a rune that we'd want later, and by getting that rune, we'd actually be uh, sacrificing 
our ability to do some smithing, which is less than ideal. So, kind of a spoilery thing, but to talk about it, uh, after we, we pick up the... After we get the final uh, final rune tablet, we decide who we want to give it to. We can either give it to the, the blacksmith, or alternatively, we can give it to Sparky. Now, if we give it to uh, the blacksmith, making sure there's nothing here, go ahead and use this moth. Uh, if we give it to the blacksmith, we get a rune that will, whatever you put it in, it's going to remove the stat and the weight requirements of it, which is unreal, needless to say. Uh, we're going to move to bell room next. But so with that, we could equip the heaviest great shield in the game, the one that requires like 40 strength and weighs 40 pounds, and we're using it for free, which that's insane. At the same time, though, if we decide to give the rune to Sparky, uh, we get the access, or basically any time we're at a vestige, we can go here and we can upgrade our weapons, and we can do runesmithing from there, which is really nice. Now, on one hand, that sounds, you know, really nice. The rune also sounds really nice, but the downside is that to go for the hidden ending, which we are planning on working towards in this series, eventually we need to sacrifice the blacksmith. So, it would make more sense to give the rune to Sparky, and then sacrifice the blacksmith, and it doesn't matter, because I'll still have the ability to do smithing. Uh, but at the same time, I would, would really like to have access to the god rune, so I can just use whatever great shield I want at any time, so. Not 100%, definitely a, uh, a decision that'll be made later. All right, so after that, go ahead and pop this open. gonna try and lure them in. You can lure them away from that that thing. Well, if they're all gonna group up in the doorway, that'll make this really easy. And over here, we can go ahead and pick up the Warrior's Claw. And then I believe there was something in Umbral. No, it's just an enemy. Alright, and that is a really solid amulet. Uh, it's not going to work out well for, for this particular build, because we aren't focusing on physical damage, we're focused on holy. Um, which I should put on something else. Do, 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 do. What would I want to do? It's physical defense wouldn't be a bad one. Uh, so now that we have that, let's take the elevator back up. And now we are ready to go to the Thief of the Chill Curse. Now, since we do have this key... Obviously, I want to address the door that's right up here. There's the Pilgrim's Perch door. We can open that with the key and continue going up. I would not suggest doing that now. To put things in perspective, we're going to go all the way through the Thief of the Chill Curse. We're going to go through Upper Kalroth, and then we're going to open this up. So if you want to open that up and go that way, feel free to, but I would not recommend it at this time. Uh, instead, we want to go to the Windmill. And then 
from the windmill, we're going to open this. Now, you should have the option to unlock this gate because the uh, Andreas, the Antonio Banderas type dude, should have uh, left a key for you. We picked that up quite a while ago. But go ahead and open that up. Uh, there is a caster right here we're going to kill. Grab this, and then a Rogar that's going to be behind us. And up top, there should be an axe that we can grab. Okay, now that we have those, we're going to enter Umbral, because we got to pop a door that's up ahead. I'll go ahead and wholly enchant my stuff. And there's going to be a fairy right after we get inside here. In terms of progression, you're kind of expected to do this area either immediately before Revelation Depths or right after, so it shouldn't feel that bad. Um, I really like going down the depths first because we can get that, that early weapon upgrade. Uh, so we're going to continue along. Check my notes. Kill fairy and trash. Okay, and then we just go through here. Uh, more trash. The other option, too, is you could always uh, get a friend to give you their Pietas, if they're not interested in it. Find people who are willing to trade, you know, get a... Uh, they want to have a matching boss weapon. Match it up and get a second Pietas. I may. I don't know. On one hand, I feel like relying on outside help to get the Pietas doesn't really make sense from the perspective of it being a walkthrough, because not everybody is going to be able to do that. On the other, I really want my second Pieta, and I don't know why they took that away. Uh, anyway, but exit Umbral. And we're going to just proceed ahead for a boss, and this is going to be the Kin Ranger Guardian. Now, a couple things with this boss. There is a thing right back where he's at that's protecting him. So we want to we want to take that out. And on top of that, he has a bunch of dogs. So what I'm going to recommend you do here is basically get over here. And we're going to wait for him and the dogs to come over this way. We're going to do a lot of ice type stuff. So just keep on moving. Now that he's gone, we can focus on taking the dogs out next. Let's see how that ice wave gets pretty annoying. Alright, let's see what Smite Saw's do here. Uh, now we just focused on this guy down. This is going to be a basic enemy in this zone, so... Lucent Beam! Bam, 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 bam. Which I noticed a lot of people on uh, various forums for this game and Discord talking about not being able to get Lucent Beam to work. It's a hold ability. If you're just tapping it, it's going to seem like it's not working. It's because you need to hold it. Anyway, after you kill him, I believe the Guardian Axe is a guaranteed drop. The rest of the stuff that he drops is going to be random. And we're going to run straight ahead here. We're going to get a Vestige. Okay, in terms of stats, 
I'm gonna keep going after we hit that 50 breakpoint in Radiance. Oh, I have more. Beautiful. We're gonna start focusing on health again. So let's go ahead and rest. And then we're gonna go into Umbral. We're gonna get a Stigma. And we're gonna go back and fight a face. Beam of holy energy. All right, let's open them up. Holy fire! Bam, 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 bam. Pretty cool spell, right? We'll grab all that, and then we'll pop the belly. And real fast, on the note of spells, I know I've, I've seen a lot of sentiment from people that think Inferno isn't good. Like, y'all, just, just for perspective, this is like the first decent spell we found since Piercing Light. Yeah, we have Blessed Reflections, which is the boss spell. Uh, but besides what we're working with right now, we don't actually get any like really good Radiant spells for quite a while from now. In fact, all the way up at the Abbey. So to put that in perspective, we go through the Fief, we go through Upper Karloth, we continue through the Pilgrim's Door, we do uh, Memorial, we do the Manse, we do the Tower, and then we're at Abbey. So there's a long time before we're gonna find other spells that are super good. Uh, whereas after Fief and we do Upper Karloth, you get access to some insane Inferno spells. So don't discount Inferno. Inferno does work. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade our Umbral Lamp. Uh, we don't gain another slot from that one just yet, but you may wanna swap out your eyes since we now have four Soul Flay slots. That's obviously a lot. Uh, but since we did force advance that quest line by going into Upper Kalroth, we can go over here now, and they should be waiting for me right where I checked before. And there he is. I didn't expect to think so go ahead, way. run through Some his dialogue. I can't. She deserves. I'm probably an I seeing her. Speaking of what I've never put in my whatever other you did right by the child. So uh, doing that, you should close out his quest line, get a trophy for it. Uh, Winterberry is going to stay here as a merchant now, and that will will wrap up their quests. So um, I'm not really using anything else. I might as well pick this up. I guess. I think if there's anything else I want from you, I don't know how much it's going to impact Hello. it, but. I've got a shot. 4,500? I hope it's good. Bye, bye, bye. Better than defense, right? This is spell power. I wonder if we can actually see... I'll, I'll be able to test it a little bit in the next area. Besides that, since we got another eye from him, we'll go back, evaluate our eyes. To be honest, I don't think uh, you, you need four soul flays. That's a lot. Uh, especially because they recharge fairly often. I think three is, is more than enough to keep things good. So we can go to a different primary at this point. Should have talked to you before, but... All right, let's see. So what do I want in here? Dread resist. Um, I want to actually test this, but... The upcoming area isn't really good to test it in. Could do 8 second of damage immunity. That one's pretty nice. Regain Soul Flay is, is still very powerful. Just having that charge up while we're in Umbral. Um, so we'll do that. 8 seconds doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, when you transition and you're just immune to all damage for 8 seconds, it's going to feel... It's going to feel long. Uh, but head back to the Thief for now. Um, and I think we're gonna we'll make our way back over to this before we wrap up the episode with any luck. I think we can pull it off. I can also test out my new spell power necklace. So we're gonna head up these ladders. 
Kind of a tedious way to get out of here. I'm gonna run all the way around now. I grab this. And we have some wolves up ahead that we can test our spell against. Alright, so how hard am I hitting? Right now. 280. And now with my where did it go? This one. We are hitting for We are whiffing. I couldn't even really see how hard we hit that guy. It's disappointing. Three thirty-six. Wow. So that is a 20% increase. That's quite sizable. I like that. No, 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 no. 20% spell damage on a pure radiant build. Sign me up. No, 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 no. And the great thing is we don't even have like a good catalyst yet. So the range isn't the best on it. No, 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 no. Frostbite, I believe this is a tank. Yes, it is. All right, kill wolves. Wolves guarding a tank. Ahead is two wolves and a frost archer. So we're going to go ahead and top off. And this next batch can be pretty annoying. Don't go into Umbral just yet, but you can see a proof back there. Uh, those guys hurt a lot. And those arrows, like, they will... Those arrows hit you. You're just, like, dead before you realize what happened. Uh, similar to the other archers, the stealth gets broken if we get close, and then they'll try to go into a uh, melee engagement with you. Take him out. Grab the enhanced lacerating knife. Go ahead and hit that, and then climb over this. Now, even though we didn't go particularly far, I do think it's worth planting a seed here. Uh, there's going to be a mini boss coming up in a little bit, and otherwise you're going to have to run past all the wolves and all that stuff. So, go ahead and exit Umbral. Well, actually, we're going to do a proper rest, but I'm going to wait for the dialogue to finish. I've been testing it more, and it seems like if I... Actually, no, rest might not. I don't know. I think rest might actually interrupt it. We'll see. Yeah, I think it did. Let me go just run and grab it and then climb back over here. So I know you can exit Umbral and it won't reset it, but I think if we if we rest, by resting we've reset the world state and that will... Setting the world state will interrupt those, so probably missed out on quite a few umbral scourings here and there from doing that too soon. But we can grab it and exit umbral and then continue along, so. Going along, up ahead we're going to be fighting a Guardian and another Frost Archer. So double the fun. And with a little bit of luck we might be able to hit him from back here before the Archer wants to engage us. We'll see if we can. What is happening there? Alright, well, it looks like the Archer has engaged us. Can I soul play you from way over here? Probably not. Kite him down a bit. That should take care of him. Oh, did. What? How? Okay. Go. Fall to your death. What are you doing, bro? Go. 
goofy ass. We'll get Frostbite here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and enter Umbral here. There are a uh, bunch of these pustules, so just pop them. Run and jump. Now, there are some... Uh, oh, where they're at? Oh, he shares one. Oh, one already came down. Well, we're just gonna bait it out. There we go. Being very cautious because of the rumble there. And you can see there's a mimic in the pile, so just go ahead and get the mimic first, and then you can go ahead and loot up. After that, jump back across. Um, let me just confirm. Loot on the bridge, cross center area, mimic two guardrails. Continue ahead, exit umbral, fight the archer and the two dogs, fire salts in cave. Get down and get loot on the bridge. So we have two frost dogs. What we're gonna do is run up and exit umbral first before we get in the engagement. he die? Ain't no way he survived. I ain't even gonna bother looking. We're looking really good. Probably didn't even need the, uh, didn't even need the rest, but like I said, we're coming up on a boss right here, so it's, it's worth getting it. Do a plunging attack there to kill those two, and then there are a bunch of just little trash enemies around here. this loot and then we're ready for the boss. Now this is another mini boss for Ruena. It's an ice witch. You'll be finding uh, a lot of these after the fact. Uh, she forms an AoE that usually centers on her. You'd want to stay out of that. Besides that, she's going to send out shards at you. They fire off in like a 1-2-3 pattern, so definitely keep your eye out for the shards as well. Uh, besides that, some other stuff here. There's a lot of trash, but we'll, we'll be able to kill that uh, with, with a little bit of luck. And otherwise, she, you should be okay. We're going to go and get right on top of her and just gonna do as much damage as we can before she starts getting all icy on us. You can see how any time you really want to get on top of her, just doing some, some of her bullshit. There's the icicles. You can see the one, two, three. And those are actually pretty deadly, so definitely be cautious about that. Kind of an annoying fight. Like she's not particularly difficult, but it's a small enough room and there's enough annoying AoE that it can be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, anyway, after she's done, we want to enter Umbral again. Go ahead and pop that. And I don't even know what this guy buffs, so I tried popping it in the test. Oh, I guess we pop you when we create a tornado. Okay, well, that's neat. Anyway, Misery Missile, uh, kind of an interesting spell. It will do um, a, like an AoE over time, so it like gradually builds up wither damage. We're going to proceed ahead. I'm just going to be fighting past. Let me confirm here. Uh, so we have some trash dogs. There's another archer up ahead. And then we're going to go umbral. So we're going to try and kill what we can before we get too close. Since I'm already in umbral and I only have one heal. cautious about not fighting too close to the archer. Uh, that's probably not going to kill it. I'll have to soul play it again. 
There we go. That one's gonna kill it for sure. Bye bye. Bro. I said die. If it's still surviving, then I'm just cursed. Okay, it's dead. Alright, so with that one gone. What you want to do is drop, pull this bridge. Get this, the Shield of Thunder and some upgrade mats, and then you're going to walk off onto that platform below. And there's another Saintly Quintessence. And then we can go ahead and push down this ladder. And open the gate. Let's go open that gate right there. All right. And with that, we are done the first part of the thief. So we're going to wrap things up here, having gotten the shortcut open. Still a lot more to go in this place, so get tuned in. And I will catch you next time as we continue.